Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Indian Billionaires Co. Today I'm going to be talking about a company that was one of the first startups to get into the unicorn leagues. Okay, I'll give you a small hint. This company saw dramatic growth and some controversies during demonetization. Yes, this company is none other than Paytm. In this video, we will also discuss Paytm's sinking stock market debut and whether it will ever be able to match its original listing price of Rs 2150 per share. Today, the company is valued at 5 billion, but how did this startup achieve its billion dollar status? Behind Paytm's tremendous success is none other than Vijay Shekhar Sharma. When we think of a billionaire, we think Papa ke paise to honge hi. But Vijay's father was a school teacher, and we know how poorly school teachers are paid in India. Also, through to the Hindi medium dialogue, is desh mein Angrezi zaban nahi, class hai. Vijay faced a setback in college because he did not know English. This made him stop attending college and begin his journey as an entrepreneur. But even then, things did not go as planned. He was left bankrupt by his former friends turned business partners. Vijay was devastated. But har ke jeetne wale ko hi Vijay Shekhar Sharma kehte hai. If something like this happened to me, I would cry for days on end. And I'm sure Vijay had his way of dealing with these feelings too. But what's super inspiring about him is that despite his setbacks, he always picks himself up and starts again. Things started to look up when he began 197 Communications, the parent company of Paytm. They wanted to experiment with three basics of the internet, advertising, commerce and content. But Vijay was constantly trying to push the boundaries. In 2011, Vijay pitched the idea of entering the payment ecosystem to his board. Obviously, the board was not convinced as he was talking about betting the company's money on a market that did not exist in India. But unlike Vijay in 2011, we are asking you to place your bet on a channel that produces awesome content daily. So go subscribe to Mashable India. Now back to the intense meeting with Vijay and his board. To convince them to pursue this ambition, Vijay put 1% of his own shares, around 2 million in 2011 at stake, in case the payment venture tanks. You know that feeling when you see the potential in something and you just have to explore it? Vijay felt exactly that. He wanted to do more, pursue what's never been done before. But he needed to do one important thing before the rollout of his internet wallet services. Build trust among consumers. Imagine asking someone in 2011 to put their money into the hands of an e-wallet. They would say, not today. This effort to build trust helped convince consumers to some extent about the digital mode of payments. But at the stroke of midnight on November 8, 2016, demonetization changed Paytm's fortunes forever. The company took a quick decision and the next morning, we all woke up to front page ads of Paytm with a picture of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi as an icon of digital India. However, the company had no idea of the political controversy this would drag them into. Any decision to use the Prime Minister's picture has to be vetted by the government. The Emblems and Names Act of 1950 passed the use of the Prime Minister's name and picture for commercial use. The company later apologized to the Ministry of Consumer Affairs for this move. Nevertheless, in just one year, demonetization helped Paytm almost double its user base. In a sinking economy where companies were struggling to stay afloat, Paytm raised massive funding from giants like Alibaba Own and Group and SoftBank. Many people said, Dal mein kuch to kala hai. Because when people were still processing this news, how could a company take a decision within just a couple of hours? Was the BJP involved? Paytm, however, debunked all of these rumours. But was the company moving too fast for its own good? In November 2021, it made a disappointing stock market debut, unlike other tech companies like Zomato, PNB Fintech and Nika. Paytm closed at 27% below the offer price of 2150 a share. What was the reason for this poor debut? Option 1. Extremely expensive valuation. Option 2. 
zero profits to show for it. Option three, low liquidity or cash flow in the market. And option four, all of the above. The right answer is option four. All of these reasons combined led to Paytm's underwhelming debut at the stock market. In barely one decade, too many verticals are being chased by this company. Macquarie Capital states that Paytm's business model lacks focus and direction. They launched their payment services gateway in 2012. In 2014, they launched a Paytm wallet. In 2015, they came up with bill payments. In 2019, they also introduced a sound box. That sound you hear when you make a transaction? Paytm par 50 rupee prapt hue. They also introduce commerce and cloud services like movie, flight and event ticketing and have also ventured into financial services. In 2017, they came up with Paytm Payments Bank. They also eventually launched Paytm Gold, Fasttag, Paytm Money and Merchant Cash Advances. In 2018, they also launched Paytm First Games. In a latest blow to the company, the RBI has banned Paytm Payments Bank from onboarding any new customers. This was done due to certain material supervisory concerns, but the RBI did not detail out any of these concerns and has also asked the bank to conduct a comprehensive system audit. Is this the first instance that's happened for the bank? No. In 2018, there was another instance where the RBI had certain concerns about the KYC processes. Paytm believes that they should be able to resolve these issues within 3 to 5 months and that there will be no impact on the existing customers. Paytm has been dealing with one crisis after the next. But as a shareholder, my only question is, when will the company start making profits? Vijay Shekhar Sharma believes that Paytm is on track to becoming profitable by quarter two of next year, that is September 2023. But these are just statements. What's the actual progress? I went through the numbers so you don't have to. And the financial year 2022-2023 quarter one numbers show signs of growth and revival. The company grew in the number of loans given out, the value of these loans, the number of users and they grew in sales as well. Given these numbers and Vijay Shekhar Sharma's rising from the ashes past, the future of Paytm looks promising and seems like a company that we should not write off just yet. What are your thoughts on Paytm's future? Will it ever reach the $10 billion leak? Tell us in the comments. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Mashable India for more such videos.